So in last week's episode, we looked at all the jobs and things that we've been doing on Melody since we've had her. So this week, what we're going to do is we're going to make a big list of all the jobs that you're likely to see us do in 2022. Green is stuff that's non-essential. Amber is stuff that we'd like to do, but it's not, well, it is essential. But red is absolutely essential. We have to do it. In order to get the boat in the water, yeah. So yeah. the jobs that you see coming up in red are critical. We can't launch the boat without them. The jobs that we see coming up in amber are very important, but we could launch if they weren't done. And the jobs that you see coming up in green are purely cosmetic. However, we might do some of the green ones just to make us feel better. Um, yeah. But yeah, because yeah. if there's days that we morale. exactly to raise morale, and if there's days that we want to tackle a red job but the weather isn't right, then you might see us doing a green job. Anyway, what we're going to do is start at the front of the boat. This here is the new bowsprit platform that I'm making. There's a big piece of steel tube that goes inside the old bit on the boat and then we've got to finish constructing this and take it all back to the boat. Then we've got to fit the new bowsprit to the front, weld it in place and paint it. We need to prepare and paint the cleat bases and the deck. Here's our new Vetus Alex anchor windlass that will lift 350 kilograms. Very handy. We need to fit the new anchor windlass and weld in the new chain plate for the baby stay. Prepare and paint um, the side decks and gunnels and fit new polycarbonate on the windows. We'll be fitting a new goose net for the mast wires and we'll be making new durade boxes and vents for these vents. I'm going to be welding the bases for these stanchion posts in place with a dissimilar metal rod and painting over them so they'll be really strong. And these Genoa tracks are going to have to come off so we can do little bits of metal repair beneath them before we actually refit them. Our new port and starboard lights will be going on to the, the sides of the pilot house on these brackets. And of course the windscreen wipers have got to go back on. And there's still this side of the pilot house to treat, along with quite a bit of rust still left for us to sort out. So we've got to treat and seal round the windows, um, and we also need to um, strip down and replace the plastic in this washboard. We need to grind back the welds where the old instruments were, so they look like they do on this side. We need to refit the main sheet track, fit the pilot house deck clutches and pilot house uh, winches. We need to um, strip and paint um, this, we need to get all the filler out um, and we need to do the wooden grates and we're also thinking about putting in a bridge deck into the pilot house. We need to fabricate an emergency tiller cover, we've had one that's been gifted to us that we're hopefully going to see if we can make that work. We're going to put some new winches on here so we'll need a stainless base for them. We're going to refit the steering system here. I've already overhauled the whole steering system so this all now works great. It's got new bearings and it works perfectly. Our instruments are up here which are all NME 2000 Raymarine stuff with the chart plotter, wind speed and indicator and the controls for the autopilot. Once we've done that we're going to blast and paint the entire cockpit. We're going to make a custom made arch that's going to have the solar panels and it's also going to be able to lift the dinghy out of the water. And we're going to make some gates to go here. We're also going to fit an outboard engine hoist, a wind charger, also a nice lovely wind steering system. This is our Aries wind vane system to steer the boat by wind. We don't have the wing for the top and we don't have the rudder so I'm going to have to make those. If anybody has got incidentally uh, diagrams of the wing and the rudder for this I'd be really grateful because I'm struggling to find resources for them but it's the Mark 1 Aries with the bronze fittings which is fantastic. And we're going to fit a white stern light here. So we need to remove this uh, plate that I made for the swim platform, get that ground back and painted. We need to blast and paint inside the swim platform and uh, we need to um, fit and seal uh, the hatch over the swim platform. And of course we're going to have a boarding ladder off the bathing platform as well and the bracket for the life raft will be on the back here. 
So as far as the master is concerned, we need to uh, repair and refurbish the sheave blocks, run new running rigging, uh, new wiring and a new mast headlight which we've got on the way, uh, and then get the mast stepped. Of course we'll be doing the cutlass bearing for uh, the prop shaft and I want to fit a prop, uh, um, a rope cutter and we'll be having to do the, uh, the fittings for the rudder seal and stuff as well. I also want to remove and replace uh, these nuts and bolts here for the gudgeon. Those two holes are going to need uh, patching up, um, I've left them open for now and there'll be a few more to do uh, along the bottom of the keel as well. This is our um, ballasted drop keel that we took out last year uh, which we need to blast and paint and refit. <laughs> and we've also got some repairs to do on the underneath of the keel. We're going to blast um, the underneath of the keel and up inside the keel box, uh, make any repairs there as necessary. We need to cut out and weld the two patches um, on the side here. Um, and also there's a few more that were identified when we shot blasted, small patches on the underside of the boat. We need to fill and fair uh, where it's been shot blasted um, to match the top sides. Um, and then we can actually finish painting and prettying her up with a bootstrap and a cove stripe. She's going to need new anodes and anti-fouler, of course. And once all that's done, we can actually start thinking about putting some teak slats on the cockpit seat, once she's completely painted, of course, and then kiwi grip or um, whatever grippy paint that we choose to use on the foredeck and on the coach roof and wherever else we need it. Along with the new solar arch, we want to fabricate a bimney and a spray hood for foul weather and sun protection. Up here in the chain locker, I've still got a little bit of welding left to do. There's a couple of uh, stringers I need to finish. I want to do the new um, chain plate for the bob stay, uh, which will act as the uh, shackle for the anchor chain as well. Uh, I want to obviously then paint it all out in epoxy and then line it with a suitable anchor locker lining material. And I would like to build some sort of uh, custom built tub to hold the anchor chain uh, which will drain overboard rather than into the bilges which it does at the moment. We need to finish off this bulkhead here um, that separates the head and the fore peak and then we can cover it with lovely teak. We need to insulate in here with the proper insulation. And then we can put nice new panels on the deck head and around the windows. We've got these nice brand new lights that have been bought for us. And we also want loads more of USB sockets around the boat. In this area we're going to be making new shelves and storage here. In the front of the forepeak, in this very forward section, is where the flexible triangle water tank goes. We might not put that back in, but uh, we probably will. But in any case, this bilge needs painting out in epoxy. And this bilge needs painting out in epoxy. And this bilge needs painting out in epoxy. And this bilge needs painting out in epoxy. We'll be taking a feed off this water inlet um, to install a salt water um, anchor chain wash up on the foredeck. So this is what the forepeak looks like without any upholstery. These slats provide ventilation under the mattress and we just need to extend them um, where we've moved the bulkhead. And these are the original mattresses um, which we will be replacing um, to fit the new shape of the forepeak. And of course once we finish around these windows with the insulation and panelling we'll be putting some wooden trim and some curtains of blinds of some sort. Here in the head what we need to do is Remove this panel of wood and treat uh, the corrosion and rust around that window frame. Cut out put this part of the floor and the lower part of this bulkhead. Um, it's only a cosmetic bulkhead, but cut that out so that we can assess uh, the uh, steel under the floor here. I think it's all alright, but uh, need to double check. I want to visualise everything. Melissa's already painted above the waterline, as you can see. But once we've cleaned all of that up, we've got to paint below the waterline uh, with epoxy as well. This pink insulation that we've used is a, a, a closed cell insulation, but to hold it in place and stop moisture getting behind it, we're going to use a closed cell foam to spray around the edges to hold it in place. The seacocks go on these stainless steel plinths, which is great because they're above the waterline, so we're either going to reinstate the existing bronze ones, or we might go to the, the more modern plastic seacocks, which a lot of people tell us are very good. 
Behind this panel against the side of the coach roof again, there's another chain plate for the forward uh, port side lower. So that's gonna have to be welded on. Need to panel out this bulkhead and the walls, um, the ceilings. Uh, once we've done all the insulation in some, some nice teak or something similar or something waterproof probably. At the moment, as you can see, there's no floor in the heads. So we've got to make a floor panel to go in there first, on top of which will go the shower tray. And then of course that will drain into a new gray water tank. Over in this corner, we'll have a raised platform for the toilet to go on in this, in this area. The sink unit will probably go in that corner or it might even fold out of this bit of the wall a little bit like Uma's arrangement. And then the other thing we want to do, of course, is put some storage up here in this corner or perhaps in this corner somewhere just so we've got somewhere to keep toiletries and toothbrushes and that kind of thing. So in here, we've got the storage locker, um, which is actually in the four peak, um, the hanging locker. We need to get behind the wall panelling and just check that it's all OK and insulate. And we also need to make some more um, usable storage. We're thinking about possibly having having drawers in here because this is, is quite narrow to hang stuff. So we might have some pull-out drawers or some shelves or something like that. So moving aft from that locker, there's another storage locker. So what we need to do in here is remove the panelling here um, to check for any rust and insulate and then remove the window surrounds to put in the aft starboard chain locker. Aft starboard chain locker? That's what you said. No. A lower. Chain, lower chain plate. Yeah. So there is an inspection plate here, um, but we're actually um, going to remove more of the floor so we can see more of the bilge area where the grey water tank is in here. Um, down there we need to um, do some rust treatment and paint it out and then install the um, grey water storage tank and sump pump. So here in the saloon, uh, we've already got some insulation up because it was flipping freezing, but it all comes down nice and easily. It's just wedged up. We've got to take that down, uh, treat any local little rust specks. There's not a lot actually to do rust wise. Clean up around these window frames, the old sicker and again, a few little rust specks. So having removed this pink panel, you can see the bottom of the old chain plate. They only protrude about two inches down below the deck head. Um, so we've got to get rid of all these cork tiles so that I can weld the new chain plates in and there's some timbers here which the wall cladding screws to, they've got to be removed so that I can weld that in. These are our new stainless steel chain plates uh, which will be slotted in like so, protruding up above the deck but we've just got to remove enough timber so I don't set fire to things while I'm welding and then as I've mentioned before when we put the insulation back up we're going to use a closed cell spray foam to adhere all the way around the panels, but not yet because we're still doing work on the boat. Once we've got the chain plates welded in and those little rust bits covered up, we're then going to obviously paint the whole of the deck head and these walls. I know they're the ceilings of the boat really, but the walls with epoxy. This is all the old wiring that comes out of the um, control panel in the pilot house and this sort of stuff all goes up to the top of the mast, so lights and deck lights and uh, and the wind speed what to mit and the UA and the VHF aerial I've got to trace and track all of that it's all pretty self-explanatory and make a new box a nice junction box for all of that wire to attach to once that's done we can put this insulation back up spray the foam around it and put up the ceiling panels which are going to be covered in vinyl just like the ones in the pilot house and of course we'll be getting rid of these old battery draining ba uh, lights and putting in new LED lights which will be white and red so that at night we can just flood the whole boat with red light and nobody loses their night vision. Last year as you saw Melissa um, treated and painted that side of the bilge. This side of the bilge has got to be done um, and we've got to make a decision about the water tanks. We've got flexible water tanks to go in either side which we took out. We might re replace those, but we, what we might do is turn these into solid metal water tanks painted out with the correct paint and with the proper fittings, just like um, the guys did on Odd Life. Under the floor here is the panel that you've seen come off before for the lifting keel. It's just, just positioned for now, but let me show you what we've got to do under here. That plate bolts down and seals the keel box. So we've got to clean this up. There's a few little repairs to do, nothing major, uh, but we're going to replace all of these nuts and bolts all the way around. 
there's one bolt here that's sheared off when I was undoing it, so we can change that and then obviously reseal that back in place after we've lifted the keel back in from under the boat. In here is the winch which winches up the keel. The handle's there, it goes in the side there. But look at this. The cable goes down here through this stainless steel tube and it comes all the way down. And that there is the tube that the cable goes down for the winch. It's four big bolts on it. Uh, I want to remove the floor, the, the wooden floor, take those bolts out and check for any corrosion around them, both from inside the boat and from up underneath, up under the uh, keel box itself. If you're wondering what these pipes are, by the way, they're part of our hot and cold water system. Back here is a load of electrical stuff. And under here are our engine batteries and our domestic batteries. So on this side, we've got our engine batteries. We've only got one in there at the moment, so we need to replace that one and get another one. We need two. And our domestic batteries, we've got a pair of Sonashine 230s, I think, um, which are fine, but they're on their last legs. So they need replacing before we set sail. They're okay for now, but won't be for long. These steps down from the saloon into the pilot house, sorry, from the pilot house into the saloon, have always bugged us because they're a huge drop. Um, they're handy because you've got storage under there. But what I want to do is put in an intermediate step here and an intermediate step here because when you're trying to come downstairs, particularly if you're carrying a cup of tea or anything, which is far too big, we're going to need new foam and new upholstery because the, all this stuff is very tired. We're undecided about what to do on this wall here. Um, we're thinking possibly a little wood stove with um, a chimney going out the top. Um, we might do that, or we might put the telly on this wall. I want to get one of those, um, I don't know if you've seen them, a cello television. That's really what I want to go on here because they're fantastic. But it's either going to be a TV or the wood burner. If we do end up putting the wood burner on that side, then we'll put the telly on a bracket on this panel here. There's absolutely tons of storage on this boat, really nicely made, um, but we need to get behind the panel at the back of the cupboard to again, have a look at the old cork tiles, probably remove them and definitely put some more modern insulation behind the cupboards. At the moment, we've got these fantastically wide berths here because this whole back lee board unclips and moves forward and creates practically a double bed. Um, but we're not gonna need that. So we might consider, this isn't a definite, but we might, box in from here here backwards and have even more storage behind the seat and get rid of the lee boards and put lee cloths along the front. Again, we're not sure about that, so that definitely isn't going on the red list, it's on the green. And again in here, we're going to um, in take get rid of these old lights and put some new modern LED lights in, either by changing the bulbs or going for the gooseneck ones, which we've been gifted. And we want to put USB sockets, as Jack has said, uh, all around the boat, Anybody, anywhere that anyone might sit needs a USB socket for charging iPads and phones and that kind of thing. This is going to be my aft cabin, come and have a look what we need to do. There's two or three patches that Dad needs to weld into the boat, um, like this one. We need to fix that window over there and then install a new one here. We also need to make an escape hatch which might go through the seat or out to the back of the transom. We need to weld up these uh, stanchion posts because they drip with the screws. Dad needs to do some more welding here on the inside of the seat. As you can see, Dad has cut out this bit of the stringer so we need to repair it. On this side we need to weld up some angle iron frames for my bed. All this metal needs to be ground and prepped and then painted with epoxy. We need to refit um, slim fittings for the bilge pump and the heater. Then we can insulate my bedroom uh, with the same method we've used all over the boat. We need to then fit the bed base and panel up the walls. I'm going to need lighting and USB circuits as well. We're going to make loads of cupboards under here, under the top pit floor. Then we can finally fit the mattress so I can sleep in here. 
And we'll be doing a very similar thing down this side. There'll be steps going down and a work, little workshop with a bench and a vice and all my tools. And at the back storage for things like the big fenders that we don't use very often. Um, so at the minute, it's just being used to, as a storage for wood and insulation. But so I can't show you there, but that's what we're gonna do that side. Up here in the pilot house, most of the wiring is fine, but we just need to take it out and check it's all working and safe. This is the only instrument in the pilot house, but we're going to be removing that and putting our battery monitor there. Up here, we need to fit our VHF, um, sideband radio, chart plotter with AIS. And of course, Andy needs to fit those red lights, which he said he was going to do weeks ago. So we have a steel pole that goes here to support the table and a, a grab rail, um, so that we need to refit that. Um, we'll also be putting in a raised floor so you don't sit on the seats and swing your legs um, but they are the right height to see out the window. We've got this amazing big chart table um, but what we're going to do is we're going to divide it in two so you can get better access um, quickly rather than having to open the whole thing. We um, need to treat the rust around this area um, and install the wooden panels around the windows. Um, we're not 100% sure we may be installing a bridge deck here so we need to probably fabricate new doors and stuff. Up in the galley um, we've got a new cooker to fit, or um, well, new to us at home that we need to fit. Um, our fridge has stopped working so we do need to get a new fridge unfortunately so we need to fit that there um, or look at an alternative option for the fridge um, and just redesign some of the storage in here. We've got this sort of bin cupboard which is a massive waste of space and we want some clever storage options in there. We also want to fit a salt water tap on the sink. Well this is absolutely nuts and there's the nut for the end of the heat exchanger that was broken. 30 quid that was. They still make all the parts for this engine but they're flipping expensive. So apart from fitting the nut on the end of the heat exchanger, we've got to fill that up with the proper antifreeze, proper coolant stuff. We've also got to top up the oil um, and change the oil in the injector pump. Another thing to do in the engine bay, I want to fit the new alternator and while I'm at it, I'll change the belts and I'll refurbish the pulleys so that they don't chew away at the new belts. Back here behind the engine, we've got our hot and cold water system. There are two shore flow pumps which work nicely and two raycores, uh, which we need to obviously change those. And that all feeds into this big um, heat exchange, uh, calorifier rather, uh, to, to heat the water, which takes its heat from the engine, but also from the Ebers batcher. And that there is the Ebers batcher system, the, the heater. So uh, that's all got to come out and be uh, assessed and repaired and made to work properly. Down here is the exhaust manifold, which um, we thought looked a bit suspicious and might need might need some work on it, but actually it looks okay. I'll take it off and service it and if it can go back on then great and if it needs to be replaced I'll make a new one. So under here on this side, on the port side, is this huge, huge deep storage bin uh, which has got all of our paint and engine bits and pieces in uh, which you can access from underneath the new seats that we've built but there's also an access panel on the front so that's going to be where we keep all of our engine spares really. Oh and as you remember I'm probably going to put the pump for the freezer unit in there and have the freezer in this seat. As you may have seen from the engine overhaul video, we've got two large tanks, one on port and one on starboard. They're full to the brim uh, and the, the fuel looks great. But before we set sail, we will remove all of that fuel and polish it and filter it. And if it's no good, we'll, we'll just replace it with brand new diesel. And finally, when everything's done, we can put nice floorboards down. So that's the end of our list uh, of jobs that we need to do on the boat to get her in the water. Thank you so much for sticking with us if you have. Yeah, yeah it was and quite as you, long. It was very long. And, and as you've seen, a lot of the 
jobs on the list are not essential to launch but things that we would like to get done before we launch and a lot of them are just cosmetic and as we said right at the beginning you may see us doing some of the more cosmetic jobs which are not critical um, but it might be that the weather is wrong for us to do one of the critical jobs or we just need to do a different job to give ourselves a break. Yeah. Um, to follow on from that we're actually adopting a system a little bit like Mads from Sail Life. If you haven't seen Sail Life head on over and check out their channel, he's awesome. So this board over here which we're going to populate with the stuff that you've seen from today's list is our to-do list which is all in columns point, yeah <laughs> and this is doing and this is done yep. so we're going to buy some red amber and green post-it notes to populate each column with the jobs that and that will enable us to see in each column how how many jobs we've got left to do uh, and which ones are critical which ones are nice to do or would be good to do and which ones are non-critical and just purely cosmetic mm -hmm. So uh, next week you should see that board filled up with red, green and amber posters. And if anyone, anyone looks at those jobs and thinks, I'm really good at that job, I'd like to come and help them, please do come along. We're always welcoming volunteers. Yeah. We'll be supplied with food and drink if you want to come and help. Definitely. <laughs> We're going to actually put the full list of jobs in the uh, video description. If you Thank you so much for sticking with us during 2021. And uh, yeah, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks so much for watching. Remember you can follow our Instagram and Facebook pages for news and updates. You can support us on Patreon and Coffee, And you can get our new Sailing Melody shirts and merchandise by clicking the pictures under the video or clicking the links in the video description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and give the video a thumbs up. We will see you very soon. Andy, Melissa and Captain Jack. 